And when we're talking about home, we're talking about that place where you can relax, that place where you can be yourself, that place where you can grow, that place where you can be who you are and you know that you have the appropriate support, attachments and engagements around you. When you're starting to talk about issues to do with people on the streets, those things are not present. Homelessness is more than simply being without a roof. It's about a set of, of emotional and relational connections with other people, to have a, a strong feeling of sense of home. And those people who are rough sleepers have actually often had that deprived. And that deprivation of a sense of place and a sense of home in the first instance might have led to mental health problems or substance use problems or difficulties at school or difficulty with other kinds of relationships. And I think for people that are homeless, we haven't seen um, the beds, the accommodation that's needed. We haven't seen um, the specialist support in terms of um, drugs and alcohol support um, and in terms of vocational rehabilitation to support people from the street um, into secure housing and back into employment. There does need to be significant support for someone who has been housed. It's, it can't just be about placing someone into a property. It has to be, well, actually, what support, holistic support does that person need? You know, do they need a drug and alcohol support worker? Do they need a mental health worker? Do they just need a generic support worker who's going to help them get all their bills set up and give them lifts to GP appointments initially and things like that? In terms of service provision, yeah. it needs to be integrated. So the services that are provided by the National Health Service need to be integrated and supported by social services. So it's it's done in a coordinated way where uh, the people are getting, um, homeless people are getting the accommodation that they need, the beds that they need, but they're also getting the mental health support that they're going to need as well, um, because um, often there are sort of complex health and wellbeing needs that, uh, that need supporting. Uh, and it's not as straightforward as just saying, here's a bed, or as straightforward as saying, here's some, some counselling, perhaps some medication. It needs to be a combination of a, a range of different um, supports and, and, and factors. Hospitals, once um, they know you're home, so they sort of um, get your treatment and, and then they just chuck you out of hospital. They just, and they just think, um, you know, good, basically, because it still, it still happens now at the hospital. So they just um, give you um, your treatment and, and then they just get, they just get rid of this. Ha happens a few times, um, we used to a few um, homeless guys, they just um, born in hospital then they, and then they just kicked, kicked them out. Because you're not really going to get, uh, the services are, uh, they are they're already stretched and so it's about providing more for the people that, that need it. Uh, and also I think there's, there's real wisdom in people that have been homeless supporting those that are homeless because they can really relate to that experience. I mean I think that sort of um, that their experience being on the streets means that they're then uh, well positioned um, as, as mentors and supports for people. So why do you help support homeless people now? Because I've, um, I've, I've been there myself and I know what they're um what they're going through at the and when and when they're on the streets because um, a lot of people just um, look down on them and I'm I'm trying to change their um I'm trying to get them motivated like um I did when I was out there. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So. As I said, I've already helped a few people, um, and they've one one of them has actually got off the drugs themselves. Um, and actually got housed, and that was someone in Milton Keynes, where I'm currently at. So that's, that's a real experience. So I'm looking forward to helping people out more in the future. There was a homeless guy when I used to go to, um, like I used to go to meetings in London, um, Patrick Allen. He passed away. I used to see him every time I used to come off the station and stuff like that. And um, when he passed away, it wanted me to do something and then I got some support um, to set this up in Milton Keynes from um, an international humanitarian organisation, Carlside International. 
So they supported me and the Sikh temple in Milton Keynes supported me. And then it was up to me afterwards just to bring people on board, like restaurants and things like that. So I set up a couple of uh, soup kitchens in Owlsbury and um, then I also do, um, I work in, so I do nice shelter in Northampton, Bedford and all around the um, surrounding areas. Some people might watching this might find it difficult to relate to um, homelessness because they'll think, well, I've got my friends, I've got my family that would, would support me, so I know that I have that sort of safety net. But that's an assumption we make, not everyone has that. Um, and, you know, an example might be for LGBT young people where um, they come out to their family and their family rejects them and they cast them out. They literally say, we don't know you. Um, and they might um, start sofa surfing with, with some friends, but their friends uh, can only do that for a limited period of time. Um, they're too old then to be um, getting support from social services because um, they're, they're not seen as a, as a minor anymore, they're, they're an older teen. Um, and they're finding it difficult to get a job. Um, they they you know can't complete school. And you can see that they become really quite vulnerable um, and there might be some nights when they're sleeping rough because they can't get an accommodation um, staying on a friend's sofa. Uh, and then there are more and more nights when they're staying on the street and less and less nights when they're staying with friends. Well, what do you think when you, when you see them? Uh, my first idea, honestly, I'm thinking poor bastard. Uh, you know, uh, how, why? What's the situation? I think everybody should do it for a fortnight. Everybody should be made to do it for a fortnight. Be homeless for a fortnight. You can't be a politician until you've been homeless. You know, people make promises before they come into power. And if you're going to make a promise, keep to it when you do come into power. But that's what it is. I mean, a place like Milton Keynes shouldn't have that level of homelessness the way it is now. It should be, you know, everyone should, there's so many empty buildings out there, you can house people. So there's definitely issues with the housing market and I think it's quite important to know that in the UK there's over 600,000 empty homes and there's just over 300,000 homeless people. So there's actually enough empty homes in, in the UK to give every homeless person two homes. Every time I tried, every door that I went to just got shut in my face, whether it was council, whether it was probation, uh, whether it was a homeless team or a shelter. Every door, every avenue got closed. No, you're too old. No, there's no support for you. You've got no connections to hear um, family members, let's just say. Um, so when you're trying and people say to you, why don't you try and get off the street? You know, there's so many options for you. No, there's not. Get more from The Open University. Check out the links on screen now.